This is the second part to the somatic motor pathways to help you um, review them for your exam. Now this one's going to cover the pathways involved in the subconscious control of muscle and it's going to be part of the extrapyramidal system. They're going to re be referred to as the medial and lateral pathways. We're only going to look at one tract in the lateral pathway and we're going to look at three in the medial pathway. Now if you notice here, the, these pathways, the upper motor neuron of all of them will be located somewhere within the brain stem. So the upper motor neurons are within the brain stem and we'll specifically tell you for each one where they originate. They will synapse, and this doesn't have all of it, so I mean it's not complete, is they'll synapse with lower motor neurons in either the anterior gray horn of the spinal cord or within motor nuclei of cranial nerves. But one thing, one distinction that makes it different from the, the, the pathways we discussed in the part one is that these are involved in, all involved in the subconscious control, ah, control of skeletal muscle. Because you'll notice the upper motor neurons do not originate within the cerebral context, or cortex. What they will do is that these descending pathways, these upper motor neurons, will synapse on the same lower motor neurons innervated by the corticospinal tracts or the cortical bulbar tracts. And what they do is they can either facilitate or inhibit the effects or inhibit those lower motor neurons. Now the tracks that we're going to discuss are either going to fall into what we refer to as the medial pathway or the lateral pathways. So if you notice the medial pathway that these tracks are, run, are for, found more in the middle part of the spinal cord and the lateral pathways like the reverse spinal tract that's the only one we're going to discuss is on the sides. Now the differences between them is that the medial pathways innervate trunk and proximal limbs and the lateral pathways do the distal limb muscles. Now I forgot to remind you about the, the innervation of the uh, muscles in, involved in the lateral cortical spinal tract and the anterior cortical spinal tract, but they're very similar. Lateral cortical spinal tract, which is found in the lateral white columns, that also again innervates distal limb muscles. And the anterior cortical spinal tract does the trunk and proximal limbs. Now another thing, this will apply to both the also when, we, when you compare lateral and anterior cortical spinal tracts, is medial tend to be more involved in gross movements of the muscles, while the lateral pathways are more involved in more precise movements of muscle groups. Now the first thing I want to compare, kind of put them in columns so you can kind of start compare and contrast different tracts, is the four tracts that we're going to discuss I'm going to first talk about do, is there decussation of the tracts or not. So the two on the left, we say the tectospinal tract and the rubrospinal tract, those do not decussate. The axons do not cross, or sorry, they do cross over. And the vestibulospinal tract and the reticulospinal tract, there is no decussation. So what does that mean? If there's crossing over, that means it's involved in contralateral control. So if the upper motor neurons originate within the left side of the brain, they will control the right side of the body and vice versa. But if there's no decussation, it's ipsilateral control. Left side controls the left side and the right side controls the right side. So that's the first thing that I want to, to show you. Now second thing is knowing where those upper motor neurons are located. All four tracks the upper motor neurons are within the brainstem. So they do not originate in that primary motor cortex. Just slight, maybe slightly different regions. Vestibular spinal tract, the upper motor neurons, the cell bodies, are within the pons and medulla. The reticular spinal tract, the reticular formation, which is all along the brainstem. And the last two are found within the midbrain. Tectospinal tract within the corpora quadrigemina and the rubrospinal tract within the red nucleus because remember rubro means red. So also I might as well kind of do it right here 
is these three are part of the medial pathways. This one is part of the lateral pathways. Where are the lower motor neurons for these? Well, the vestibular spinal tract and the tectospinal tract, lower motor neurons may be located in the motor nuclei of cranial nerves if it's affecting anything to do with the head or the neck. All of them, lower motor neurons, can be found in the anterior gray horns of the spinal cord. The only difference is that these last two tracts is those tracts only go as far as the cervical spinal cord, so they do not descend any further. Vestibular spinal and reticular spinal tracts go all throughout, descend all throughout the spinal cord. Now, the first one, tract, was like, what's the overall function of these? Well, the vestibular spinal tract, it's all, think, uh, the vestibule in the inner ear. It's involved in equilibrium. So this will help you with help, helping with balance, support posture. If you start to lose your balance, this tract will help you move your, even your eyes, your limbs, your head to help you to maintain your balance. It also will be involved in altering muscle tone. Now this information ultimately originated from information that came from the vestibular cochlear nerve. So it will say, hey, something's up with balance, and so you, you'll change and move your body to help you to maintain your balance. The tectospinal tract, remember, originates within the midbrain, and specifically within the corpora quadrigemina. Well, corpora quadrigemina has four colliculi that are part of it. The superior colliculi are involved in visual reflexes, and the auditory reflexes are influenced by, by the inferior colliculi. So there will be this, this tract will be involved in control of your eyes, your neck, your head, upper limbs in response to visual reflexes, auditory reflexes. So for example, auditory reflexes, a very loud noise and you jump or you turn your head. So it'll be involved in that. The reticular spinal tract will give you a little kind of an interesting bit of information that we didn't talk, may have not talked about in lecture, is I did talk about this tract was involved in the subconscious regulation of reflex activity. And, but also, even you know, this is involved in posture, uh, it's in, in muscle tone, but another thing that's involved in is control of emotional movement of muscles, of facial expression. If someone cracks a joke, you smile. That tract's involved in that. Now, here's a little bit of a, you know interesting note. So you look at the gentleman. In the left, the gentleman was asked to smile. He was asked to smile. You notice he's having problems on the left side of the face. Well, he had a damage to his cortical bulbar tract. So involving the facial nerve. So when he was asked to smile, he had a problem with it because that's involved in voluntary control of skeletal muscle. But they cracked a joke to him, he had no trouble smiling because the reticular spinal tract is at the subconscious level. So that is pretty interesting that that happened. Now the last tract is the rubrospinal tract. So this originates in that red nuclei in the midbrain, and that helps to control muscle tone again. This descent, this, this, oh, sorry, this also is involved in precise movements of distal muscles, but just of the upper limbs, because it only descends to the cervical spinal cord. So this will be the end of the second part of the webinar.